in September 2022, Bloomberg Business Journal had announced that the latest results of the National Assessment of Educational Progress, the National Report Card, had revealed historically large drops in math and reading scores for U.S. public school students and suggested that the findings are an indictment of school closures that went on for far too long, pushed by teachers, unions, and some other political allies. And it was their opinion that they also show why recovering the ground students have lost is a national emergency. Could this have been avoided is a legitimate inquiry. And it is of at least probative value that no emergency declaration ever came. While under the ruling in U.S. v. Puntitore, evidence of a defendant's flight after a crime has been committed is admissible to prove his or her consciousness of guilt. Hello, my name is Major Mike Webb. Three years ago, we were hit with a virus that was met with silence and spread unchecked. Denials for days, weeks, then months that led to more deaths, more infections, more stress, and more loneliness, according to the president. Picking up from the last time in this after-action review on decisions made by the leaders of the Arlington Public Schools so as to ensure that the training objectives have been accomplished in the last video we had covered in this leadership development role-playing simulation First, the lesson that leaders conduct AARs and IPRs during and after training. For what? To improve in performance and proficiency in TTPs or tactics, techniques, and procedures. Second, we should have at least become acquainted with the concept that if you fail to plan, you essentially plan to fail because you cannot hit the ground running to implement the decisive plan if you don't even have one. And you'd be surprised how many kids missed that little item on the test. Third, when you are making a quarter million dollars as a superintendent and are responsible for 29,000 children and 434 employees, all looking to you for answers, your job becomes to get those answers. That's, that's your priority, to begin to develop and refine a clear picture of the threat to enable you as a leader to develop a reasonably calculated plan to mitigate or prevent the harms or threats. And if you are a leader and you are not doing that, then you are not part of the solution and just a, another part of the problem. Are we clear? According to FM 6-0, nice little army manual, at least military leaders recognize that information requirements developments involves identifying prioritizing and refining uncertainties about the threat and significant aspects of an operating environment that must be resolved to accomplish the mission. You must be able to see something in order to do something about it. And commanders then base their initial information requirements on the critical gaps identified by the staff in the mission, this mission analysis step as a part of the military decision-making process, also known as MDMP. To the degree that negligence involves a failure to perform a duty, actual malice exists when the defendant knowingly commits misconduct or when engaged in action with reckless disregard and mere acquiescence or silence or failure of an officer to perform a duty does not make one a participant in a conspiracy necessarily unless he acts or fails to act with knowledge of the purpose of the conspiracy and with the view of protecting and aiding it. Hence, we have two elements of proof, actual knowledge of wrongful conduct, and a purpose to aid and abet the objectives and goals of the conspiracy. That is a conspiracy theory. And a defendant is presumed to continue his or her involvement in a conspiracy unless he or she makes substantial affirmative actions, showing a withdrawal, abandonment, or defeat of the conspiratorial purposes. 
While mere cessation of activity in furtherance of the conspiracy is not alone sufficient to show withdrawal. You just can't stop doing it then hope to get away. The point of this material regarding citations of legal precedent is to remind those who aspire to hold those le leadership jobs that you can wonderfully uh, have, a time, you have a wonderful time uh, enjoying all the equipment of being called a leader, but there is also a cost measured in responsibility, especially when being held accountable later for decisions made. And as stated in DHSB Board of Regents, the celebrated DACA case, it is a foundational principle of administrative law that judicial review of agency action is limited to those grounds that the agency invoked when it took the action, such that if those grounds are inadequate, a court may, in its discretion, what? Request a fuller explanation of the agency's reasoning at the time of the agency action. One of the great concerns expressed by many leaders during the pandemic uh, and in the beginning was the hope to avoid unacceptable losses. But at least problematic for public policy was the discussions focused upon an un inestimable loss of life, engaging in speculation, traditionally skewed in American courts, while leaders appeared to downplay the opportunity costs associated with those decisions they were making in order to avoid losses of life that may or may not occur. And apparently closing a blind eye to all the choices that may have consequences and that electing one course of action may categorically exclude any benefits or costs associated with another course of action that had not been selected. This is basic economics, opportunity cost. When leaders like Arlington Public School Board Chairman Monique O'Grady and Interim Superintendent Cynthia Johnson decided on March 13, 2020 to cancel in-person instruction before any order given by the governor or anyone else, did they know or should they have known that there would be costs associated with those actions? Not much is published in contemporaneous news accounts, but according to Ballotpedia, there were five main types of arguments that many leaders advanced for school closures. Number one, and we can assume that they probably in all can fell within one of these five or all, all, all five. Number one, school closures were necessary to prevent the spread of the virus. True or false? Two, evidence from past pandemics supported the efficacy of school closures. True or false? Three, reopening schools would increase COVID-19 spread. True or false? Reopening schools put people of color at highest risk. True or false? Five, keeping schools closed made sense because COVID-19 outbreaks were inevitable. Now, considering these arguments, place yourself in the place of Superintendent Johnson and School Board Chairperson O'Grady and ask yourself in this role play, are these based in fact or are they just assumptions posing a hypothesis that needs to be validated and requiring a process of identifying those gaps in knowledge to better inform leadership? on how to address the crisis to develop reasonably calculated measures to mitigate or prevent the risks, harm, dangers, and threats presented in the operating environment. Or when you're making $250,000, do you just look up and tell people that you're waiting for instructions from your boss, somebody even further up the chain than you, because you are only following orders? That's a good question. And it's certainly an excuse that has been given by some leaders when suddenly things started to roll downhill. If you were on the stand in court, and this is the big question, being held accountable for your decisions now, could you, telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, get acquitted? This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest.